Now, as high-profile music tours make a comeback in the post-pandemic world, pop icons like Taylor Swift and Beyonce are no longer just music or entertainment figures. These music artists have transcended themselves into economic phenomena capable of majorly affecting consumption in the cities they choose to tour. Take a look. Call it Bayflation or maybe Swiftflation. Could pop stars be powering inflation as concert prices surge? While the cost of certain goods is in part retreating, that doesn't include live music. Around the world, concert tickets have surged in price and economists are noticing. The tickets were available and I bought them. Club Renaissance tickets, they were really expensive. They were like 5,000 high. When in the States, like, they're like $1,200. It just takes a quick scan through ticket sites like StubHub to see that it's a global phenomenon. The cheapest seat at a Taylor Swift show in Seattle this year will set you back $1,200. While in Mexico City, they cost $500. Across Asia, crowds are flocking to see marquee names like Bruno Mars, Coldplay and the Backstreet Boys. While in the UK, recreation and culture prices rose their fastest in 30 years. Around 150,000 music fans paid $431 for a ticket to June's Glastonbury Festival to see Elton John and hundreds of other acts. With demand far exceeding supply, prices for tickets on the secondary market have soared up to 100% above face value. The US Labor Department does not specifically measure inflation for concert prices, but the inflation rate for live performing admission events is currently 2.6 percentage points more than US headline inflation. That gap has increased this year as headline figures have declined. Despite this increase, 80% of consumers want to go out as much or more this year even as fans endure the cost and difficulty of securing tickets to big events. <laughs>